Well, where we can see, where we at least Rob, where we did see strong leadership and making a difference was probably the Stormers game, Skull Kruger, assuming the captaincy in the second half and turning things around, you know, just sort of galvanizing the guys, a uh, bit of a huddle and then things sort of just changed after that. Um, and then just looking at some of the other uh, res South African results, the Cheetahs uh, probably let that one slip too. Um, and then, yeah, sadly, the, 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 East, the Kings uh, getting a beating on the Lions. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, on paper, um, not the worst weekend for sort of a South African challenge in terms of the teams that are realistic um, sort of uh, contenders for the playoffs. Uh, the Cheetahs losing, okay, that's not too much of a train smash because with respect to them, nobody really fancies them to, to make the playoffs cut. So the fact that the Sharks won, and then that was immediately followed up on the Saturday by convincing wins in the end for both the Stormers and the Lions, um, who look like probably the sort of premier two South African sides for, for good playoffs positions. Um, so overall, um, a, a decent weekend, but not without its flaws. Uh, as you say, the Stormers were looking incredibly ragged um, until Skulk Virgo um, came off the bench. Um, Damien Dalenda had basically become the emergency captain because Francois Herber sort of pulled out at the 11th hour, you know, one of the, the co-captains. We know that Juan de Jong was still missing through concussion, so they did have a bit of a leadership issue. And the fact that Skulk had been chosen on the bench meant that, uh, you know, he couldn't be, he couldn't suddenly be sort of elevated to, to captain, which would have been the logical thing to do. He is a, a past Stormers captain and also an occasional Springbok captain uh, and has great leadership uh, um, credentials, I think. I've always rated Skulk as a as a skipper. So it was great that he was able to come off the bench and, and put an end to the madness. It was, a, a, as I say, an incredibly sort of, the game was all over the show. There was a sort of great, great attacking play, a miserable defense sometimes by both teams. Um, but in the end, the Stormers won by, by 18 points. So you've got to say, okay, you've beaten the 2011 champions, although they're not what they were, yeah. but uh, they've beaten them by 18 points. So uh, perhaps don't, don't quibble too much. They did close out the game quite well. Uh, that was, that was uh, the sort of bright side. I thought the last 10 or 15, uh, when Skulk basically got a grip on things, uh, you felt that the team as a whole um, closed out the game quite intelligently and there were no further scares in those yeah. last 10 minutes. So that was, that was a good sign. Storm is still, still firing quite nicely. Darren, and then let's just yeah. touch on some of the other results from the weekend. Big wins for the Crusaders um, against the Brumbies. That was, that was uh, probably quite an upset mm. um, in the grander scheme of things. Um, the Waratahs pumping the force, um, and then a maiden win for the Sunwolves after conceding almost 100 points last weekend. Yeah, well, starting with the Sunwolves, you know, they've flown all the way back from a three-match tour of South Africa, took on the Jaguars, um, who, you know, pre-season I really thought would be one of the contenders, but they've been absolutely horrible this tournament. But they upset them. They came back nicely in that second half. They were well down at some point, at one point. And I really thought this would be another loss for the poor Sunwolves. But, you know, cr credit to them. They did incredibly well to pick up their, their first win. And hopefully they go on to, you know, from strength to strength after that. And then, as you said, the, the match in Canberra on Sunday morning, the Brumbies at home um, against the Crusaders, who are really building nicely. I'm a little bit, um, I'm thinking now that um, the Crusaders might well be the team to beat. You know, they've got all the experience. When you look at that pack of fours with Kieran Reid, Sam Whitelock, Luke Romano and then the, the, the Frank, um, Owen Franks in the front row. They're really, really playing some good, good rugby. And as soon as their back line starts firing, who, you know, obviously missing Dan Carter mm -hmm. and players like that, and they were without Ryan Crotty as well this weekend, as soon as they start firing, you know, they're a dangerous team because no team is going to be more experienced, hasn't won as many titles as the Crusaders. And they've won, I think, six or seven on the trot now, which is one of their better seasons starts. They're normally quite a slow starting mm -hmm. side. But they're now right behind the, the Chiefs in the New Zealand Conference, you know, look like sure playoff contenders. So, you know, they're really, really going to be tough to beat. And that was the sec second heavy defeat in a row for the Brumbies at home, uh, the Chiefs having thumped them at, um, in Canberra in the previous round. So, you know, fantastic um, if you're a Crusaders fan, I guess. Mm. And then the Waratahs' force game, you know, the Waratahs really also failed to deliver the season. But to their credit, they, they did really, really well, I thought, against, against the four side in, in Perth. The Waratahs obviously on their way to, to Newlands to play the uh, Stormers next yes. weekend. I think it's going to be a tough match for the, for the, um, for the Stormers. But Israel Folau playing some good rugby. Um, you know, they're really coming back into the thing, in the swing of things. That Australian conference is really uh, open. You know, mm -hmm. anyone up for, up for grabs for sure. The, the Rebels at the moment top that group. But the Brumbies and the Waratahs, I think the force and the Rebels, with respect, uh, the force and the sorry, the, the Rebels and the, who's the other team in the Australian conference? The Reds, Reds. you know, per perhaps out of it. Um, so it looks like a three-team conference title race there. So the Waratahs, yeah, moving in the right direction, I think.